what contributes to the energy of an electron or two factors? Obviously, number one, when we talk about energy of electrons, number one factor is main shell, main energy shell. This is supposed to be N, so main shell. And then the second factor is the type of orbital or shape of the electron cloud. So S orbital has less energy than P orbital, which has less energy than D orbital, which has less energy than F orbital. And if I look at the main shell, is it fair to say that if I talk about the main shell, the higher the shell number, the more energy. Another word, can I say first shell has less energy than second shell, has less energy than third shell, has less energy than fourth shell. So main energy shell shows how far electrons are from nucleus. Shape of the orbital also determines the energy. We have to combine these two factors together to come up with relative energy of electrons. So on the next slide, this is relative energy of electrons. What do we see? Well, 1s, which is on first shell, has minimum energy. Then 2s, which is on second shell, is the next higher energy because it's further away from nucleus. And then on second energy shell, we also have 2p. And as we say, p have more energy than s. And then on third shell, we have s, p, and d. So s has minimum energy in third shell, higher energy, next higher energy orbitals are three Ps. And then on third shell, 3D has more energy than 3P, so that's where it is. But how come 4S, which belongs to the fourth shell, has less energy than 3D? Because that's effect of the shape of the electron clouds. So do you see, it's not only main energy shell which determine the energy. It's also the type of orbital. And the next one is 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p. Now you might wonder how you are going to remember this unusual relative energy. I'm going to show you how to do that on the next slide. I'm going to give you this, this diagram on the exam table. All you have to do, relative energies are changing, going from right to left, coming back to right to left, coming back to right to left, coming back to right to left. So this is the energy, relative energy of orbital. So you're starting with 1s, and then you go to 2s, 1s, higher energy 2s, after 2s, you go to 2p. And after 2p, you go to 3s. And after 3s, you are going to go, let me erase these so you can see whether, so after 3s, can I say it comes 3p? What comes after 3p? 4s, right here. And then you go back to the right, go to the left. Do you see 3d is the next higher energy? and then 4p, and then 5s. So it's easy. If you use this chart easily, you can move diagonally, moving from right to left, you obtain this relative energy of orbitals. So when you are going to write the electron configuration of any element, all you have to do, 
look how many electrons that element has got. Electrons are going to be sitting from lowest energy, which is 1s. Once the orbital is filled, they go to the next higher energy and next higher energy. So they try to fill up the orbitals. So we discuss this. I hope this makes sense. So if I'm going to write the electron configuration of hydrogen, and hydrogen has got one electron only, this is supposed to be one, one electron. Can I say the configuration is one as one? And if I go to helium with two electrons, you know S orbital or any orbital can accommodate two electrons. So we say, there is S orbital on the first shell, and this uh, or S orbital contains both electrons. And if I go to lithium, which has got three electrons, you see that 1S is already filled, one electron left, that electron doesn't have a choice to go to second shell, and the lowest energy of second shell, the lowest energy of second shell is 2S, that third electron will be there. And if I go look at number of electrons in carbon, there are six. So I place two of them in one S, maximum two. Next, I go to next higher energy, which is two S. I place the maximum two. And what comes after two S is two P. How many electrons do we have left? It, the total was six. I use two plus two, which is four. Four out of six, two electrons left. Do, those two electrons will go to two p orbital. So on, so forth. So if I say write the electron configuration for magnesium and look at the periodic table, you see number twelve above it which simply means you have 12 electrons and you start by placing two electrons in 1s, then you go to next higher energy level, which is 2s, two of them there. Next, you go to next higher energy of orbitals, which are two p's. Do you remember that p's are coming as triplet? Th three orbitals can accommodate six. So, so far, we have got 6 plus 2, 8, 8 plus 2, 10. Out of 12, 2 electrons left, and the next higher energy orbital is 3s. So, 2 electrons will be sitting on 3s. So, this is the complete electron configuration for magnesium. Now, another way of showing Configuration, electron configuration is this. We show a line for each orbital. And I'm going to call this 1s. How many electrons two? One of them is up and one of them is down. This is simply showing that these electrons are paired. That means if you think of an electron like air, which is spinning around in axis, around its own axis as it's spinning around its sun, so electrons have a spin. They can spin around their axis clockwise or counterclockwise. That's what we are showing here. They are paired. That means they are they have opposite spin. They spin around their axis in opposite direction, and that is simply because that's more stable. Because when electrons are spinning, they produce magnetic field. When direction of the spinning are opposite. You have two opposite magnetic fields, which is like two opposite ends of a magnet bar, which attract each other. So that is the stability. Attraction brings a stability. The stability brings uh, means less energy content. So I can go to 2s. I have two electrons. Again, I pair them up. I have. If I want to show, this is 2s, if I want to show 2p, remember p orbitals, there are triplet sisters. So we have got three p orbitals, and each one of them, each orbital, 
can accommodate two electrons. Electrons are paired. That's 2p. You can call it 2px, 2py, and 2pz. And if you count, you have already used 6 plus 2, 8 plus 2, 10, 2 left, and next orbital is 3s, which has got one pair of electrons. So that's another way of showing the spin number, showing direction of the spinning of electrons. And if I want to look at the electron configuration of boron, how many electrons do you see as you look to the periodic table? Above B, do you see five? That means five protons, therefore boron has got five electrons. So 1s, minimum energy orbital on first year takes two, and that means it's filled. Then next higher energy is 2s, you place two electrons, fill, then you go next higher orbital, which is 2p, there are three of them. See, there are three p orbital, except you have one electron. So that one electron can go only in one of these three, so the other two are remaining empty orbitals. So this is showing the spin of electrons, how they, they are paired up inside 1s electron pair in 2s, one single electron in 2p. So if I go to next slide, I can show you the same thing. Carbon, atomic number six, therefore six electrons. So first shell, 1s orbital with two electrons, second shell, 2s, and 2p. Out of six, one of them in 1s, I mean, one pair in 1s, another pair in 2s, and two electrons left for 2p. So I'm going to show you, this is 1s, it has a pair of electrons, opposite the spin, 2s, a pair of electrons with opposite spin, and then we have got 2p. Remember, p orbitals, they're always coming as triplet. So we have three p orbitals and two electrons. So in this case, guys, <coughs> electrons are like us. If you are going to <coughs> send by your company for training and they are paying for your hotel, Obviously, if you are not with your partner, you want to have your own room. You don't want to share your room with strangers. So electrons do the same thing. If there are enough empty orbitals, they say, why not have my own orbital? So that means electrons try to occupy maximum number of orbitals, which is in this case, two orbitals rather than one. And then I go to nitrogen, Atomic nitrogen, atomic number of nitrogen is seven. That means seven electrons. First shell, that's the first shell. Two electrons in S. Second shell, two electrons in S. Seven electrons, minus four, three is left in for 2P. And look here, one orbital, two electrons, one orbital, two electrons, P, there are three of them, and you have three electrons left. So these three electrons, again, try to occupy maximum number of orbitals. Three single room in a hotel, three orbitals, three electrons, each electron is going to pick up its own orbital, doesn't want to pair up unless it has to. And then I look at phosphorus, what is atomic number of phosphorus is this 15. So number 15 here, two electrons on the lowest energy orbital of 1s, two electrons in 2s, so that's why I write two here, so these numbers are showing number of electrons. And 
the first number is showing the main energy level. First shell. This means these electrons are, are on second shell, second main shell, second shell. And these are again on second shell, and second shell, but they are p orbitals. So far, you have used only four out of 15, 11 is left. So six of them will fill up 2p, five left. Out of those five, two of them will take 3s. Now three is left and we have 3p orbital. So each electron pick up its own singly occupied electron. So if I go to the next slide, this is a table in your book. It has used the same rules to show you the electron configuration of different elements. These are different elements and this is the electron configuration. So you can practice picking one of them, looking at atomic number, here CU, atomic number 31, write the electron configuration and check the book, see if you have the right electron configuration or not. 